behind the emotion of the new faces in cabinet. Mabuhai, I, Richie Valdez, do swear that I will be faithful. The reality of a prime minister slipping in opinion polls, looking to turn the tide ahead of the next election. This is a, a moment where putting forward the strongest possible team of, uh, with uh, fresh energy and a range of skills that are going to be able to continue the really important work. Out with the old, seven of them, including Marco Mendicino, booted from public safety after months of criticism for failed gun legislation and his office's handling of Paul Bernardo's transfer. His replacement, longtime minister Dominic LeBlanc, not the only veteran changing roles. Bill Blair takes on defense and Sean Fraser, housing, a file the opposition has hammered the liberals on for months. People need housing whether they've been here for uh, a dozen generations uh, or they got here uh, last month. The answer is, at least in part, to continue to build more stock. And among those just arriving to Cabinet, one position Taylor made to address complaints in services to Canadians. This is really where the rubber hits the road in providing services um, to citizens right across the country, such as passports, there are some things, uh, dental care was included in there. As the Liberals try to chart a new course, the official opposition said the makeover is not extreme enough. The one minister who is responsible for these failures didn't get moved, and that minister is Justin Trudeau. Despite the overall, the new cabinet maintains gender parity and voices from across the country. The prime minister's office no doubt doing more math as it figures out timing for the next election. Rafi Bujikan, CBC News, Ottawa. Well, let's bring in Chief Political Correspondent Rosemary Barton. Rosie, this is a significant overhaul, but what has to happen next? Juanita, as you heard from Rafi, this is obviously an attempt to reset the government, re-energize the government's agenda after what has been a difficult six months or so, when the government messaging wasn't getting through largely because of those questions around foreign interference. The size of what we saw today is really a tacit admission, I think, that some things weren't working. While many of the faces have changed, what the government needs to demonstrate to Canadians now is that its approach has also changed, that it can connect with them on issues that matter, affordability, housing, and even that new department meant to deal with citizen services or things that aren't working. These are also issues, remember, where the Conservatives have been successfully applying pressure. The government has been vulnerable. And, and I think there's a question here too, Juanita, about whether a cabinet shuffle is enough to rebrand a government that's been around for almost eight years, particularly given that the leader remains the same.